An empowered woman is someone who knows her strengths and isn't afraid to embrace it. So we invite you to join us as we introduce you to a community of South African business women who inspire change through conversations and who also wish to empower other women by sharing their stories. So thank you for tuning into our channel. Don't go away, we'll be right back. And welcome back, everyone. I'm your host, Brigetti Limbanda. I am a global goodwill ambassador, a live stream host and producer, and I help brands, networks, and social good communities create great digital storytelling experiences. Our guest today on the Cappuccino Club social TV channel is Madeleine Gomez. Madeleine is an ex-director of a top 10 company for 20 years. She's an executive business and mindset coach and a doctor in metaphysical science, as well as a public speaker of creating a mindset for the future. Madeleine is passionate about assisting people at all levels with their self-development process to create success in their personal and business lives, to eliminate the potential repeat cycles of struggle, poverty, illness and relationship problems. She works closely with leaders to create an individual leadership brand that serves their desired outcomes. Madeleine, welcome to the show. Thank you very much, Brigitte. It's great to have you with us today. And so um, you focus on helping people with their leadership skills. Now, leaders have been around for aeons, companies, um, businesses, Every kind of possible initiative out there has got to have someone that leads the organization. But like with everything else, like with technology, things change. Has there been a shift in the leadership role? Um, you've been in business long enough to to make that judgment call. Has there been? Have you seen a shift in the way people lead, or are you seeing that there's a need for for change? Um, there's a huge outcry for leadership change and leadership behavior to change. When you, for instance, look at LinkedIn, a lot of the um, conversations is around, around leadership and uh, failed leadership, basically, or uninspired leadership. So I believe due to the social media and people having access to information and also talking to each other more freely and openly, um, they came to realize that certain styles are not accepted anymore and uh, they want a more humanistic approach and a more uh, a approach where leaders actually unite and they're not separate from the rest. And that is what I found when I had my company for 20 years. I also dealt, I worked very, very closely. I partnered basically with CEOs and directors. And I could see where they went wrong in their companies and their businesses. And in those years, it was still much of a power situation. They empower and the rest, and they separate from the staff. And that's why I could step in and be the bridge between the CEO director or the transport manager and the staff. And that's where my success basically came from. And that's when I started to realize the winning recipe for a company and a company's growth is happy staff, after all. And they want to be inspired. They, not everybody wants to be a leader. Most people are born to be followers, and they're happy with that, and there's nothing wrong with that. They don't want to be the head, and the head gets chopped off. So they're happy to follow, but they're not happy to follow fools anymore. They want to be inspired. They want to be followed by people who respect them. They want to be followed by leaders who basically knows what they're doing and they earn the respect basically. And, you know, it comes from the inside, a very authentic approach. 
And that's when I realized leaders need help. They need um, coaching and mentorship. And they also need support. They don't have emotional support. They can't speak to anybody and say, I've got an off day or I've got this situation at the office that I don't know how to handle this because who do they speak to? It's a weakness that they show if they speak to their staff about it. So it's a very lonely journey to take. And that's why I'm passionate about it. Madeleine, now it is Women's Month and the, you know the focus is on women and with the cappuccino club's social channel we really do want to um, set out to inspire women but when we talk about um, the journey in terms of authenticity and what you were just saying is it easier or more difficult for a for a from a male or a, a, a female perspective to to lead are there certain advantages that you see to women or, or men? Is there, is there a difference? There's a huge difference. Um, it's more difficult for women because we are still struggling with the old mindset that we're dealing with um, of women are um, not equal to men. And I've seen it a lot in companies in Cape Town. Um, so it, it is harder for women to, to make their mark and to basically stand out and be unique. But I believe that we need women leaders for the simple reason that people need new nurturing. And we have that nurturing factor born into us. And business is not all about business and figures. That's, I believe every leader, and that's why I'm passionate about branding a leader, I take them and take their individuality and brand that so that they know who they are and their self-mastery in their skill it's not only the job skill that comes in, but it's a second skill, and that is self-mastery, being able to work with people, being able to bring people, to unite people and let them follow you effectively so that your role can have an impact and also the desired results at the end of the day. So for me, I'm passionate about women leaders because they can make a huge difference by a softer approach. We know all when people speak to us and they have a soft approach, um, you in, you immediately follow, you listen, you, you follow the lead and you're part of that conversation. But when a person is hard on you and there's a distance between you and that person, you will lead because it's your job, but not because you follow and you because you want to be there. I believe that we need to get today, leaders need to get people to, to follow them out of respect and because they want to. And that actually happens, it stems from their behavior towards people. So it's important to brand yourself as a leader and say, okay, who am I? What am I bringing to the table as a leader? How do I want people to perceive me? What is unique about me that will inspire others? Because ultimately, as a leader, you can actually change lives, you know. You can touch the younger ones and you can lead them into future leadership. So if you see your role in a bigger game and, and you see the importance of your role touching others' lives while driving a successful business, then I think you arrive. Then, then you make it successfully. It is that struggle in between. Um, it is hard for women. I, I'm, there's not two ways about it. And I think for a long time to come, it will still be hard. But all we need to do is persist and be there and deliver differently and get better results and that speak for itself. With your coaching, what are, could you give us three things that um, leaders could, could benefit by engaging your services? What I get mostly from the CEOs I'm coaching at the moment is, first of all, they near burnout. So they want to know how can they restructure their life to be efficient and effective in all areas of their lives, not only business. Which why why find, is that? Because they burn out. Um, they reach a stage in an age where they put everything into their business and all they do is business, 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 and they wake up one morning the wife's not happy, they don't have a private relationship, they're not happy at home, they're not happy at work, and they don't know how to sort the mess out. So they, they more and more, I get the request to say, help me to sort my life out, I need to sort my life out, I need a balance, I'm tired all the time, I can't get to the gym, I'm very busy at the office, 
I need to be at home and it's the kids and I can't cope amongst all of this. And it's because they don't have a proper routine. They, they get buried in the work and it takes over and it takes priority and eventually they just I think we've lost signal with Madeleine and she's back. There we go. Yeah. yeah. So that is one main thing that they want to know about a lot. And then um, they enjoy the fact that I want to, that I go into branding and say, let's brand you as a leader so that people will recognize you as the leader for these reasons. You inspire them. You actually bring people together. You're actually the one who listens. You know, there's a, a hotel in Cape Town that I went to for a, um, a wine tasting and I stood next to the GM and I, I knew it's a GM because I could sense his presence because I've been with his, uh, with that level of people for so long. But he didn't introduce himself as a GM, he introduced him by name and he hung around and he spoke to everybody but you could see the presence around him and the calmness but also you know that authority presence but it's not pushing on to you, you just know. And then afterwards he wandered off and I asked one of the waiters there, I said, is that to GM? And he said, yes. And I said, tell me more about your GM. How do you feel about your GM? And he said, most amazing man to work for. And I said, that's the first time I hear that, tell me why. And he said, um, when we make mistakes, he doesn't criticize us. He would stand exactly like he stood next to you having a conversation and he would say, what do you think, how should you have done it differently to get the results that we want? He never ever criticized one staff member. He treats them with respect. He speaks to them in a different way. He approached them. Um, he doesn't let them feel inferior or be underneath him. He's part of the team. And the way he mingled that night with everybody and with his staff members, you could see this respect, but they worked together as a team, they united. And that was quite um, touching for me to see him in operation and also to hear from a staff member how happy they were working for him. And this, this person said to me, I never want to leave this hotel as long as he's here. He's really looking after the staff. Now, I think that for every leader is a um, five star. Um, you know, if, if staff feels like that and they're inspired and they respect you to that level, then you achieve what you need to achieve. Then you, your self mastery is absolutely 100% and you're authentically a leader. And that is what I want to achieve with the people that I coach is I want to assist them to have a balance in their life, to brand themselves, to know who they are, and basically to, to bring that forth and lead from that place then it's an authentic leader. Madeleine, now for a, a woman, um, why is it more challenging for a woman to be um, a leader and, and how can she um, up-level herself to be able to serve in the boardroom along with the men? Difficult question. I've been trying to get onto boards for a long time. <laughs> and not being successful. Um, it's difficult for a woman to be a leader because people don't take you seriously. And it's a natural thing. Um, they're so used to men, men walk into a room or they say, I'm the director of the company and yet nobody look, you know, it's fine. And they just plainly accept it, whether his behavior is okay or his behavior is not okay. And I think we've lost other a woman needs to work harder for people to really um, prove herself to, to show credibility and for people to believe in her um, it's just a natural thing i believe that men tend to not take us very serious and um, we need to prove it and we need to show our worth and then they come on board it took me a while when i was the director of a company for only men um 700 Zulu people, um, I had my clients were only men and powerful men and it took me a while to re it goes up and down the signal 
uh, it took me a while for them to trust me and trust my judgment. And in the beginning, it was very hard. And I, at one stage, I felt like I'm always a bitch. You know, I need to be so bitchy to bring my message across because I felt like I get pushed all the time and tested all the time. But eventually, when I realized that's my boundaries, I'm not going to sway on that. And I am there for transparency, honesty, and results. Then they, they were happy. And from there on, nobody ever questioned me again because my reputation actually walked ahead of me and they knew what they're going to get in business. But in the beginning, when people don't know you, it's hard work basically to build your reputation. What are, what are three things that women can do immediately to change the status quo? What is your advice? I would say know who your staff are. Know who you're dealing with per person, not per group. Make an effort and find out who each person is, what do they do in the organization or the company, what their role is, because their role is very important to you. And they are either an influencer or a doer for you to succeed. So it's important to know who the people are that you're working with and who's working for you. And then the second um, part is immediately set boundaries and tell them what are your values so that they know who they're dealing with. Values are extremely important. First of all, it's your values that comes into play. And then it is the company values and how they perceive your values to fit into the company values. And then it is the staff values and you need to marry all three. So that's important to bring the values across and the mission and the vision of the company and reintroduce it all the time, especially if you're new. Uh, that's one of my first steps is know the people, reintroduce your values, introduce the mission and vision. Don't just accept or assume because the staff's there, they know that. They don't know it. They If they don't hear it every day and see it every day, uh, they get blasé about it. And then be fair, you know, be humane towards the staff. Be fair, but be firm. And that way, I believe you set the mark and you bring everybody's performance in alignment with what you want and what you want to achieve. And then it's easier to manage from there. Yeah, I just want to acknowledge a comment that we got from um, Tony Carr on LinkedIn. He says it isn't a natural thing and he's talking about leadership. We need to break the idea that leadership is macho. And I can't see the rest of his comment, unfortunately, but we'll um i'll have a look at that later so yes we need we certainly need to to break the mold what kind of um people are you looking to work with uh madeleine first of all i love to work with managers who aspire to become leaders because i believe that is where our change in society is absolutely the most important um, because they they manage us at the moment so they become used to a authority role they've got people working under them but they aspire to become the ceo or a director we apologize for the signal issues um, and because of that, I, I like to work with them because that is the ideal time to brand them, to make them aware of how to communicate with people, how to give instructions, how to influence people to follow you instead of instruct people to follow you. You know, be more humane in your uh, approach towards people. How do you reward people for doing well and, rec and uh, acknowledge their performance and their existence in your company so that they don't feel they're just a number doing just a job because otherwise that's what you're going to get. Um, so management is extremely important. And then I enjoy working with CEOs and directors because they've been there already. Um, they know exactly what's working for them, but they also start to realize what's not working for them. And I want to like to tweak that and change that and became, become better at what is not working for them. And what I also enjoy working with the directors and the, the CEOs with is they want to bring change into their companies. They're scared to bring change into their companies because they know ch people hate change. They feel uneasy about change. They feel insecure about change. But sometimes when we restructure, we just restructured one company, nobody lost their jobs, but we restructured it in such a way where three people became CEOs of one company and um, so that the this original CEO can take a step back and start to manage it from a distance 
to give him a, a sort of a relief because the stress was basically killing him. And I rebalanced his life and routine for him. And we we actually passed on the, re, the responsibilities um, to more members. And so the members who got more responsibility are very happy because they can a couple of tips that we that we've put trust in their ability and also they now allow to lead in their own way and if they make a mistake so what it can always be fixed so the staff is more far more happier now and the the original ceo can take a step back he actually went on a week's holiday so it's beneficial to all sometimes to look at your structure, look at where your pain points are in the company and say, okay, what can we do about that? What can we do to improve it for the staff? Because automatically when the staff's happy, figures are up, customers are happy, and it's less work for the CEO. He can focus on the growth of the company. Madeleine, how can people um, connect with you? Sorry, I couldn't hear. How can people connect with you if they would like to engage your your services? Brigitte, I can't hear. Ah, we've got a sound a sound issue. Um, let me just do an, a sound check quickly and see whether it I can improve that a little bit. Can you hear me now? Can you hear me? I can hear you. Yeah. Are you able to hear me? No. Okay, let me let me just type that. Um, if you can let me know in the comments, anyone who's watching, if you are able Where's to hear sound? me. Okay, Madeleine, I'm putting the question on the banner Is there. Sound? I've put the question on the on the screen there, so if you can let people know how they can um, connect with you. Sorry about that. Okay, no problem. I want you to let people know how they can contact you. They can contact me on info at madelainegomes.co.za 100 percent so and are you available on social media can people connect with you on linkedin um for example linkedin I, or on a yeah i am on linkedin i also have a web page it's www.madelainegomes.com and uh, Tony, thanks for letting me know. He says he can hear us both now. Anyway, technology oh, is what it is. <laughs> and no. uh, we're at the mercy of, of the signals. But I'm glad we managed to, to get through that despite the signal loss every now and then. So I want to say thank you to everyone who's joined us. Uh, much appreciated. And if you wouldn't mind sharing this broadcast, that would also be fantastic. Madeleine, thank you so much for being a great guest. Well, thank you for this opportunity. I really appreciate it. It was lovely speaking to you. It's a big pleasure. Thank you, everyone. And so from me, Bridgetti in Cape Town, it's goodbye for now and thank you for watching.